One of the first things that I have all of my MCAT students do is create a why I missed a cheat. Here's how it works. They go through every question that they missed on that practice test and they list the reason that they got it wrong. Now, one extremely common reason that I see is that they lost focus, but that's not how they put it on their sheet. Usually it looks a little something like they missed a key word, maybe a not or least likely, they read and reread the passage or the question, but it just didn't make any sense to them. They made a silly error and they can't explain why now, or maybe some of them even were nodding off during the test. If that sounds familiar to you, you too might have a problem with maintaining focus on the MCAT. I know it was a problem for me. I know my worst ever practice test happened when I was nodding off during the test and I couldn't seem to bring back my focus and just wake up. Hi, I'm Emily Bolin from MCAT Mastery and I'm gonna teach you my favorite technique to recenter and refocus when you're testing so that you can use every single second of your testing to your advantage. The MCAT is a seven and a half hour long exam. Yes, that includes two 10 minute breaks and a 30 minute lunch break, but that's still a really long time to maintain attention for. I don't know about you, but I certainly struggle to maintain my focus from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. straight. And you're not alone. What you and I would usually refer to as an attention span is typically called sustained attention by scientists. In 1947, Mackworth published a study in the Journal of Experimental Psychology suggesting that the average adult loses focus after about 45 minutes spent on one task. Again, in 1979, another scientist named Rajapar Suraman published a study in science further suggesting that 45 minutes is this cap where most adults start to lose focus. Now it's worthwhile stating that not all scientists agree on the utility of the idea of sustained attention or an attention span. They like to point out that every individual will vary their amount of attention from task to task and person to person. But the popularization of techniques that allow us to increase our productivity by working for a short concentrated period of time and then following that with a break really indicates that a lot of people do struggle with maintaining attention over long periods of time. The extremely popular Pomodoro method, for example, suggests that you only spend 25 to 30 minutes on a task before taking a break and walking away. Even if you take all of the breaks offered to you on test day, you'll still need to focus for 90 to 95 minutes at a time. That's about double what Macworth suggested and nearly quadruple what the Pomodoro method would suggest. Now there's nothing wrong with losing focus on testing. You are human. It is likely it will happen to you. I know it happened to me at times. But what's important is that you make sure you notice it. The problems arise when you either A, don't notice that your attention is drifting, or B, don't do anything about your attention drifting. Do you remember when I mentioned that test, that practice test that went really poorly for me? The problem wasn't that I started nodding off. The problem was that I didn't know what to do about nodding off. You might have a different sort of problem. Most of us are short on time for one section of the test, or at least one section, and you don't want to waste time by being zoned out or drifting off. You want to use every second you have available to you. Learning to notice when your attention is drifting is a skill that you'll develop over time. What I'm going to teach you right now is what you can do to bring your attention back once you notice it is drifting. Now warning, I'm going to lead you through a little stretching and breathing exercise. So if you can, you might want to make sure that you have nothing in your hands, that your feet are firmly planted on the floor, not up on the chair with you, and that you are ready to move a little bit. Ready? Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to sit upright. You want to roll your shoulders back. And then you're going to weave your hands together like this in front of you. So I've woven my fingers together and my palms are facing out in front of me. I'm gonna press my arms straight and raise them up overhead and take a deep breath in as I do this. And then when I'm ready to exhale, I'm going to lean all the way over to the right. Inhale back up to center. Wait here for a second and exhale over to the left. And then inhale back into the center. Drop my arms and roll my shoulders. Now that we're done, you should find yourself seated in an upright position. 
with your belly button stacked on top of your pelvis, your ribs on top of your belly button, and your shoulders on top of your ribs. You should create space between your ears and your shoulders. Make sure that you have good posture and you are ready and focused to pay attention to this test, pay attention to your studying. That whole little stretching routine right there only took us 15 seconds. I regularly watch my students start to crumple themselves into a ball as we work through trickier and trickier questions and they feel more and more stressed about the work we are doing together. Watching them go through this breathing routine, watching them reset their posture and their breathing is like resetting and wiping away all of that stress. It gives them a chance to start anew, to really tell their mind that they are ready to focus on the task in front of them. And this is something that you can use in the testing room, you can use on your breaks, you can use while you're studying to make sure that you are getting the most out of your time in front of your study materials. Now that you're refocused and ready to crush some MCAT studying, why don't you take a second, check out the link below, and look at our free email course on some other strategies that will help you absolutely crush your studying based on well-being, wellness, and of course, test-taking strategies. Additionally, if you want more tailored strategies that you can use, tips and techniques on your test day, maybe consider getting paired with a tutor like me. The link for that is also below. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit and do a stretching routine with me today. I really hope that you now feel ready to focus on all of your MCAT goals.